everyone. Welcome to our virtual event space. So my name is Ali and I'm your host for this evening and I'm so excited to be introducing Amy Timberlake and Liesl Shirtliff here to discuss the next book in Amy's beloved Skunk and Badger series, Egg Marks the Spot. Uh, but before we get into the good stuff, I just want to quickly thank you all so much for tuning in. As much as we miss having you all in the bookstore, it has been such a delight to expand this online program to connect readers and authors in a virtual space. So thank you all so much for tuning in and buying books. Your support is what makes all of this possible. So I will be linking directly to books in the chat all evening. So it'll be super easy to go find them. For those of you in the Seattle area, come on in. All three of our locations are open or you can place an order online and come pick them up in store. Or if you're not local, we do happily ship. And once again, we are so, so grateful for your support. Uh, while you're over on our website, I definitely encourage you to check out some of our other upcoming events. We have an exciting roster coming up in the next few months. And if you'd like to stay in touch with our community, you can sign up for our newsletter. It's a weekly update about about events and exciting releases, our online book clubs, and of course, follow us on any of the major social media platforms. We are at Third Place Books for the quickest updates and recommendations. Uh, speaking of social media, if you'd like to check out some of our past virtual events, you can find most of them on our YouTube channel, including this event within the next 48 hours. So if you'd like to see our other virtual events or share this one, go ahead and track us down over there. Um, so we're going to be here for about an hour, and towards the end, we will be taking questions. So if you have any questions, which we very much hope that you do, go ahead and leave those in the Q&A box, which should be either at the top or bottom of your screen. It is different than the chat box. The chat is great for virtual applause and connecting with each other. We would love to know where you are from or your favorite latest read, but when it comes time for questions, do make sure that those end up in the Q&A so we can most easily find them. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone of our commitment to ensuring the safety and well-being of event attendees and guest authors so in our chat and question spaces, please do lead with kindness and refrain from any inappropriate behavior or harassment. Uh, there are auto-generated closed captions available from the menu at the top or bottom of your screen. Uh, select the live transcript button to enable or disable them. And finally, should any technical issues arise, which, you know, this is Zoom, it could happen. Um, we will work as quickly as we can to resolve them, and we appreciate your patience and understanding. And I believe that that is all of my housekeeping. So without further ado, I am so thrilled to introduce Amy Timberlake author of Newberry Honor, Edgar Award, Golden Kite Award, the China Times Best Book Award winning books for young readers, including One Came Home, The Dirty Cowboy, and of course, Skunk and Badger. Egg Marks the Spot is the second book in the Skunk and Badger series and takes our woodland friends on a treasure recovering adventure. So in conversation this evening, I am so pleased to welcome Liesl Shirtliff, the New York Times bestselling author of Rump, the fairly true tale of Rumpelstiltskin, and other books in the Fairly True Tales series, as well as the Time Castaways series. Her books have been named to several state award lists and have won many awards, including a Children's Book Award from the International Literacy Association. So thank you both so very much for being here. I am so excited to listen in on this conversation. If you need anything, of course, give me a shout. I will be listening. Same goes with all of you in the audience. I will be in chat. And with that, I'm going to pass the stage to our authors. So welcome, both of you. Hello. Yay! Yay. So glad to be here. <laughs> welcome. Yay. Thank you. Um, and Amy, hello. Yay. Hey, so, so we should just tell everyone how we know each other. Right. Um, do you want to tell them? Or do you want me no, to No, you tell you go, go ahead, you tell them. So you tell them Amy the and I, we, we live in Chicago. And so we're here, we're talking from Chicago and we have, um, we have formed this friendship over 
over food <laughs> in in a a little booth in the back of a restaurant. Uh, she and I and and Kate Hannigan often get together and we we chat books and writing and also try to plan world domination. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're making great we're making progress little by little but um it's been with it's, animals and sweaters on with, my part and <laughs> yes and ukuleles and ukuleles and, and good food <laughs> good food this is the way um so yeah i'm super excited about egg marks the spot oh my gosh i i loved it so much I, oh. it's hard for me to say I loved it better than the first, but I loved it just as much. And there were, there were like, it was just so fun. And you just did such a great job of taking it at, in a new direction, but still keeping mm -hmm. that skunk and badger flavor and, and humor and sweetness to it. So why don't you, Amy, tell us a little bit about Egg Marks the Spot and maybe even, you know, if people are here who don't, no Skunk and Badger, like the first book even, just give us a little introduction of the, the series as a whole. Okay, so, okay, so Skunk and Badger is, uh, okay, well, I suppose I should say, uh, first of all, John Clausen has done all the art in here, so if you're a John Clausen fan, there's a lot of really beautiful art in here, and you would know him from the I want my hat back books, probably the ones with the bear with the red cone hat that goes missing. And then I believe a rabbit meets an unfortunate end in those books. And then <laughs> he leaves it slightly mysterious. And then the rock, uh, the most latest is the rock from the sky. Um, but OK, Skunk and Badger, Skunk and Badger is the story of Badger and he does important rock work and he does this work every day. He does it diligently. He is extremely dedicated. And here is an illustration of Badger at his rock table doing important rock work. And then one day there's this knock at the door, rap, 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 rap. And it is the skunk with this red suitcase. And it turns out that skunk is his new roommate. He is an unexpected roommate, and unexpected roommates always, well, I would say, look, is, is that ever pleasant, an unexpected roommate? Anyway, it does not go well, and it does not, it does not go well, but anyway, he's got this new roommate, and I did not, and they're both very different animals. They have, and by that, I mean, they are very different personalities. And somehow they have to come together at the end. They actually do come together at the end. I don't think that's a spoiler because there is book two. <laughs> but it was like one of those things that's slightly scary when you're writing the book and you've, and you've made the characters so different you're thinking, I, and then they do things that you think, oh my gosh, they're never going to come together. But luckily they did. So we now have book two. So book two comes from a scene in Skunk and Badger. So I'm going to just read. It's very, very short. I promise it's very short. So in this scene, so this is from Skunk and Badger, the first book. And this is where Egg Marks the Spot comes from. And in this scene, Badger is showing Skunk his geological survey maps, which are maps that show the rocks underneath the ground. Anyway, Badger told Skunk how he used maps on rock finding expedition. Skunk gasped, rock finding expedition? What is that? Badger explained about how he camped out. Under the stars, interrupted Skunk. Technically, yes, but with a picnic every day, interrupted Skunk again. I guess I do eat outside. Skunk hopped from one foot to the other. What else? What else? So Badger explained how clues in the landscape led to a particular rock. Skunk slapped his paw on the map. Like X marks the spot? Sort of. Yes, then Skunk turned and said, Badger, what are we waiting for? 
So skunk doesn't have to wait too long because they go on egg marks the spot. And I guess that's a clue that it's not quite as they expect because this is not X marks the spot, this is egg marks the spot. Um, and basically, Badger is going to go and find a replacement for his spider. He wants to go on this rock finding expedition to find a replacement for his spider eye agate, which his cousin Fisher um, has stolen, taken years ago. You can see him right here on the edge of the book. That's Fisher right there. And, <laughs> and, um, and Skunk wants to leave because on Sundays, well, basically he's got this problem with a hedgehog who's taking his New York Times book review. And he would, he just wants to get out, out, of, out of Dodge because he doesn't want to be there on another Sunday where there's no book review. So off they go on this camping trip to campsite number five, Endless Lake, and then all this other stuff happens. Um, and it definitely does not go to plan. Um, so that's the, and that's the, and that's what happens in the second book. So the first book is, you know, them learning, they get together, they have big conflicts. And then in this one, they're going to go on an adventure and they're going to go out into the world. So the first book is in the brownstone and the second book is out into the world, into the na natural world. So. I love it. Yeah, the first one was a little more urban -y. you know, they're in the they're in the brownstone and then they go in a completely different environment. And I love that so much because you put when you put your characters in a different environment, there's new things that come about for the you know, the way those characters <laughs> behave. And you definitely saw that. And um I just have to side note, I the new Yak Times book review was just so delightful. <laughs> Anytime that came up and they talked about it, I it just like warmed my heart. I thought it was adorable. Um, yeah, so that so that is like a yak. I'll just say that it's like the animal, the yak animal. And yaks make the best book reviewers because they have shaggy bangs and humps of nutrients. That's what Skunk <laughs> thinks anyway. Because I, I mean, it's kind of interesting when you're starting to think about like yaks and you go, why would they be really good book reviewers? And you go, well, it might be really helpful to have your your eyes covered with shaggy bangs so you can focus and you wouldn't have to eat much so you could because you had your hump of nutrients. And so then you could really just read read books all the time. This is this isn't all in the book in the book. It's just in my head of like why yaks would be good book reviewers. All right. So I just wanted to That's say so that. That's so great though to get that window I I feel like in in these books, the humor, the reason it lands so well is because it feels so serious in a way. Like it's like you took it really seriously. The New York Times book review is very important. <laughs> you know, it and is the, very important. And the important <laughs> rock work and the focus, focus, focus that Badger's always doing. Um I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about important rock work. Um, so Badger is very into geology and rocks and um, he's always, he's very particular about his important rock work. Skunk is always interrupting him, but he's, he really wants to focus, focus, focus on his important <laughs> rock work. So I wanted to know, um, do you kind of feel about your writing time the way that Badger feels about his important rock work time. Well, focus, focus, focus is something I am trying to make myself do all the time. <laughs> yes. So, Damn. yes. And I, you know, it, I mean, yeah, so yes, absolutely. I am Badger, except I think Badger is better at focus, focus, focusing than I am at I, I have skunk still inside me and badger. It's a problem. I, I wanted to I wanted to ask that because it's so <laughs> funny. I as I because I know you and I feel like, you know, I've gotten to know like some of your little your quirks and things about you, the things that make you tick and the things that make you go, oh no. <laughs> um and I feel like you are sort of both skunk and badger. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like this those even though those characters are so opposite that they both kind of come out of you. 
Yes, absolutely. I think I almost I, I honestly think it's kind of this is my this is my psyche fighting each other. Like yes. this book is like I I constantly would like um I am trying to, you know, I'm trying to do my work and it requires a lot of focus, focus, focus. See, it just comes out of me. I say that. <laughs> and then the other part of me is like, hey, don't you want to go for a walk? Maybe now would be a really good time to make muffins. <laughs> hey, we could, if we went to the lake right now, we could see the sunset. Wouldn't that be really, that would be really nice. That would be, oh, we should do that. I mean, how many sunsets do you have in June at exactly this time? Not very many. Okay. So it's like that. <laughs> and then I'm yes. like, Amy. Have you done your time? You know, like, come on, you got to sit here. You got to, you know, you got to do this thing that you do. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. That, so, I yeah. Think, I think you just, like, captured kind of every writer and, <laughs> like, every creative person's dilemma. It's like, you know, your writing or your creative work is very important to you. But almost because it's so important all these other things start to creep in and you know the muffins and the lake and all these other things that try to like you know lure you away from the very important writing and the yes exactly um so that it was i was i was kind of reading it feeling that way i'm like i know exactly how she feels <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly i know you do <laughs> Um, and you brought up so much, like just talking about those things, like all the distractions, you brought up so many things that I loved, um, in the book, like the endless lake, um, mm -hmm. it was, is Lake Michigan, the inspiration for the endless lake. I think, uh, I think it's actually, I think it's a little further North because in this one, I wanted to do. Lake Superior agate. So I was thinking about I was thinking about Lake Superior, um, and that area. So I was thinking northern, kind of northern Minnesota. Oh, and I do have a picture of a spider eye agate. Do you want to kind of see it? I do. I yes. Let's see it. I want to. <laughs> I well, I'll get to it. But yes, please show us the spider eye agate. Because I got this. I I bought this six and a half pound. Ugh. Oh my god. Agate book. So I could show people the okay. agate. <laughs> All right, show us the spider <laughs> spider eye. So, so this is okay, so this <laughs> is nice. and this is an eye agate. And if you look at all right, I gotta make sure my, my can you see all those little circles yeah. in there? Those are yeah. known as eyes. So okay. there isn't really a spider eye agate, but I wanted to so did you make that up? I did. Oh, I, I made this. Awesome. I made the name, but the eye agate is actually a thing. And these are oh. the the Lake Superior agates. I mean, you can find agates all over the country, but these yeah. are the ones that you find up there. So they're kind of they're red because of the iron in the in the soil, um, or in the. All right. See, this is where I am not a geologist. When the when the quartz goes through <laughs> through these little plumes in the in the in the um, the old dried hard lava, the basalt, it picks up these impurities. And in Lake Superior, it picks up iron. So you get the beautiful red. Mm. Um, and these, but these agates, these are like this this guy's collection. So these are like the most beautiful agates you'll ever see in your life. But anyway, so that's what Badger is dreaming about. So when he's looking into his agates and he's seeing worlds and everything, when you see some of these beautiful rocks, you think, yeah, I mean, you could just get lost in there for a long, long time. And it's if like, you oh. love rocks, you know, it's going to just, it's going to it's going to make you ask a lot of questions like, how did this happen? You know, how old is this quartz? Where, you know, why, why is this, why, why, why are these, why is the quartz 
um, in these hollows in the basalts. And anyway, it's all really interesting stuff. So Badger has this whole thing and, with the agates. And your audience clearly like really appreciates your geological research and agriculture. <laughs> I, well, I think it adds. I think it adds like another a, a nice layer to this children's book that it's it like it's clear that you did your research. You know that this is. I mean, it's very important rock work. So I I have so I was curious how good your knowledge is with geology uh -oh, and rocks. Uh -oh. And 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 in the beginning, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It's it's all for fun. But um, in the beginning of of the book, uh when badger is doing his very important rock work he he always tosses up you know a rock and he's saying rock or mineral rock or mineral yeah so yeah i want yeah. to know if you could readily help me i i gathered some things in my house <laughs> some like rock stones i don't know what they are jewelry stuff that i have and i would like to know if you could help me decipher if it is a rock or a mineral do you think oh boy well let's see what well, let's let's see how i do I'll, it's it's pretty easy one at first. I you know I just had this this pebble this stone right here rock rock or mineral. Oh my gosh, it does. Whoa. Oh, I think that's going to probably be a rock. Oh, yeah. is that like is that like a fossil though? Does it have some fossil? Is that? I mean, it looks like it's kind of got. This this is All my right. this is my meditation stone. <laughs> Oh, this is it what feels I use. good I, when I put it on the ground and I just stare at it. This is my focus wow. stone. Wow. Um, well, and I, I don't know what it's made out of, but you, I, think I would you're guess right that it's a rock. I would guess a rock. Okay. Um. Here's here's this <laughs> oh <my> is <laughs> this is actually a, a bookend that my editor gave to me for. Oh um, yeah. So I have a book. My book Grump has all to do with like gems because the dwarves they they dig up you know um for crystals and gems and stones and stuff so she gave me these awesome bookends so is this a rock or a mineral <laughs> uh <laughs> I, that looks like that looks like a geode bookend <laughs> to me <laughs> like <laughs> but it's made out of what rock or mineral yeah. oh that would be that would be like that looks like one of these. Yeah, is Can you um, see this? This is a geode. Yeah, geode. And is a geode a, considered a rock or a mineral? Or well, is it a, thing? a geode is a hollow in the in the lava that gets filled with crystals or quartz or chalcedony. Yeah, so that's. And I okay. did just I did just see this. All right, hold on a second. My agate book will tell you exactly <laughs> what that is. Okay, so a geode. All right, there's the difference. The di there's differences between thunder eggs, geodes. I don't know how to say this. A mag jewel, and okay, so basically, a thunder egg is a hollow rhyolite nodule that fills with chalcedony. I think chalcedony is a kind of quartz. It can be, oh, there's going to be somebody who's a geologist who's going to, or a rock person that's really <laughs> going to know that. And a someone, geode. Someone said thunder eggs? Did you say thunder eggs? Yeah, you know, I, at first I thought from my, see, I also subscribed to this, rock and gem. And this is super fun. I just, a little advertisement if you really love rocks you should subscribe to this because in the back besides the educational stuff and all of that in the back they tell you all of the show sites across the country where oh. you can go and go to rock shows that would be we a really cool i think that would be a really cool classroom connection for teachers that might read, and this and these books make such great read alouds. I actually, I I told one of my friends when she saw the cover, she's like, "Oh, I love the cover of that book." And I said, "Oh my gosh, it's such a cute read aloud. Your kid would love it." And so she oh, got it you. and is starting to read it, read it to him. She's like, "Cause she loved the illustrations too." She's like, "Sold." I I described it. I said, "I was like, it's like, <laughs> it's like Winnie the Pooh meets the Odd Couple." And she was like, sold. <laughs> so, um, okay, we're going to move on from rocks. Um, oh, good. I want to <laughs> talk, talk about 
camping and food, and we can we can talk about them separately, and we can talk about them together. Um, but I really um, I wanted to talk about camping and adventuring, and I know that you're you're an adventurer, that you you have done lots of adventures and trips mm -hmm. and and like and I assume you do camping, right? Do you do you go camping? I I have I have done it. Are you but are you like more of like an adventurer, not a camper? Well, to be totally honest, I prefer sleeping in a bed. I yes, percent. <laughs> I love I love the hiking part. I love all the adventuring part, but then when it comes to bedtime, I I definitely want to be in a bed. So I'm with you there. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um so where where are the favorite places in the world that you have adventured? Well, I haven't, I, I haven't done, I haven't done enough. I think I, <laughs> for me, I'd love to do more. Um, the, the thing that was the most, that's been the most fun is to do, uh, walks in England and staying in pubs. So you walk all day and then you stay in a pub at night and then you just keep walking. So I've walked across England. So the very shortest distance you can walk across England, it's the coast to coast. You start, you pick up a stone in one sea and you drop and then like two weeks later you drop it on the other sea. And one of the things that's fun about walking in England is that they have, they allow you to walk you you can walk through people's property basically they have right of way for paths so you don't have to walk on highways or roads or share you just you just walk across the field sometimes you have to share it with uh share your path with cows which <laughs> weirdly i mean it's funny i'm from wisconsin so i'm pretty used to cows but you know when you actually have to be in a field with a cow they're pretty big and you actually have to be sort of quiet and calm and talk to the cows and sort of get around. Sometimes they just watch you. They're very curious animals, so they watch you. <laughs> and I, I mean, I have done a lot of singing to cows in England because you come over the stiles and you step into the field and then I go, hello, little cow. I am just walking down this field please do not bother me <laughs> and i keep little singing a little song to you and then you walk over and then you get to the end of the field and you walk up and over the fence and then you or you know there's a gate anyway those are my favorite um i and then there's just places in the west like colorado um places like that which are obviously really lovely and you know mountains are are gorgeous the the thing the thing that i really like about england is that it never gets that high and so you don't just spend all day walking up 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 you know you you walk up and down and it's 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 really fun it's just really fun walking so and the, oh and they don't call it they don't call it hiking they call it walking so it feels like something that anybody can do like, I think yeah. sometimes hiking sort of feels like you have to be super athletic and, um, you know, you have to have the right gear. But in England, basically, you bring your lunch and then at the end of the day, you have a nice pub. There's a pub there with a bed. And I love that. And there's yeah. probably someone who's baking cakes and pies along the way. I think we need more bakers in Colorado we more, up we mountains. I, I was gonna say it sounds weird but we need more we need more skunks no I, um i don't really want yeah i don't really want to share a trip with an actual skunk but i was thinking skunk like people who will cook for you along the way um my husband and i next year will 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 be married for 20 years oh so we're gonna go it's it's really hiking i don't think you can really say it's just walking but we're gonna go hike um in the dolomites in italy oh you do, wow you can do these things like for like a whole week you hike from hut to hut and oh, um, wow. from these huts where they'll 
you can sleep in a bed and they'll cook for you and then you go and you keep hiking and you hike like all you know oh that's gonna be great we're gonna go adventuring for sure um (laughs) so i'm with you and i aside from wanting to sleep in a bed i i am a huge food person i really like my food and i like it good (laughs) so um so camping like when i go camping i'm i think i'm a little bit like skunk where i'm like packing all the good gear and stuff and it's like too much um so i i was curious to know like if you have well let's just talk about food like what are what are your favorite things to cook or to eat well i know one of them muffins muffins, muffins. yes what kind of muffins, muffins is well, on my website, I have I have a basic muffin recipe, and basically, after you've kind of figured out your basic muffin recipe, you can kind of alter it in any way you want. So I just did peanut butter chocolate today. I I like pear ginger because um, that's pear it's ginger. seasonal. Yeah, it's really good. Sounds good. <laughs> Yeah. But it's a, basically I have this basic muffin recipe and then I just I just add whatever seasonal to it. And Skunk definitely also cooks like that too. He so basically Skunk kind of cooks like I cook. So I and I kind of cook um I call it nearly vegan because I like <laughs> chocolate and I really I haven't given up eggs. Like skunk, I, I, I definitely eat eggs. So well, you gotta have that's your kind of how I cook. Montelenos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, huevos montelenos. That is the dreamy. Do you, wanna, do you want me to read that food? Yeah, I want you to read about, tell us about that food. Because I've heard of huevos rancheros, and I've had that. And then when you described the... Huevos motuleño, leño, I can't, I'm butchering it, motuleños. Yeah, that where is really it? really tasty. Um, oh, yeah, if you cooked on a stove. Um, mm, where is, oh, wait, breakfast. Okay, he spied muffins. Uh, nope. He's yellow with three, okay, no. I'm trying, I'm, you know, I'm having trouble finding that section. Um, but there is this, this e frisbee soon. Koshimo. And applesauce. No, that's the well, I have, dinner. That I have goes. another, I have another <laughs> dish for you. Okay. That I feel like I, I want to make for you one day. Yes. Because really? My, I was thinking my favorite dish is I make sweet potato hash browns with fried eggs and avocados and this really really good seasoned pepper it's so delicious that sounds good i think skunk would like that i think he would i think he would (laughs) i think he would be proud of me um yeah so uh definitely and and i also make really good cauliflower lentil tacos. I know that doesn't sound really good, maybe, if, uh, like, but they are really delicious. They are really That good. would be good. Yeah. I think that sounds really good. I think, really the, I think you would like that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, the food is really, the food is really funny, I think, because the, because basically the stories are told through Badger's eyes, um, and, Badger initially, he thinks in his life, he thinks that life is, um, (laughs) initially his whole eating experience is about cereal because that is the most efficient way to eat. He keeps cereal in the cupboards and he brings it down. And, you know, when he's doing his rock work, he probably takes breaks and he goes into the kitchen, he grabs the cereal and he just eats it. And then he goes back to his important rock work. Then Skunk comes into his life, Skunk cooks, and he's never had this kind of food before. And so the funny part about it for me is that it's like a superpower that Skunk sort of has because 
as soon as Badger sits down at food, everything else in the world drops away. And the only thing he's thinking about is that, that food. And so the fun part about it for me as a writer is that if something needs to happen or skunk needs to disappear, all I have to do with Badger is put a plate of food in front of him <laughs> and, and, and anything can happen and he will not notice it. And, and, the, and the funny thing, I think, I mean, all right, I'm just going to confess this, but my, um, I think I got that from my brother eating cereal. Like in the first book, there's this clink slide slurp, clink slide slurp when Badger is eating cereal. And I think that was from my brother because I just remember, I know you stuff. know, yeah, that clink slide slurp with yeah. a, you, but it's with, with a my spoon. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, so, you know, and then, and then, and then I also, I also married a guy who um, is a really enthusiastic eater, which I think encouraged my cooking because I could set stuff in front of Phil. And I remember once I cooked for him and I mean, I, I don't mean to brag, but he, I mean, it's probably more about Phil than it is about me, but he took a bite of whatever it was and he was so happy that he slid off the table. <laughs> he slid off his stool and I went, okay, this is for me. I can cook for you because you you just are so, so enthusiastic gratifying. about food. This is why I so. stopped cooking for my children. They just <laughs> like, you know, forget it. They don't even appreciate it. They just want their cereal. Clink, slice, yes. you know. Um, well, in, in, rela in relation to that, I someone asked a question that I think relates really well to this, which is, is Skunk considering writing and publishing a cookbook? It's, it's I amazing. think that would be, I think that would be pretty fun. It would be pretty it fun. It would be pretty fun. I would, I mean, honestly, I, I, you know, somebody, somebody would have to ask me to do it probably, or Algonquin would have to want it, but I think it could be pretty fun. And I think, I think there would be a fun way to write a cookbook. You know who else? Louise Penny. I don't know yeah. if you know those mysteries. She should write. There I, should be a cookbook for those too. Because... I've heard you talk about those. I need to read those because I I've heard you talk about those. <laughs> I remember. I I usually read a lot of your book recommendations and really really like them. So I need to I need to. Okay, Louise Penny, put it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's great. Okay, so so real uh, one thing I really um I found really delightful was the was the chickens and the chicken talk in this book and I can't remember like was there a lot of chicken talk in the first book I can't remember. oh there's a there's there's more I think there's more really? for sure I don't know why I maybe it, like I just kind of forgot but um because I was so focused on something badger but for some reason Augusta was just delighting me so much in the story and and I and I just was laughing so hard at all the chicken talk and that skunk can understand them so well and badger can't at all so i was curious to know if um if you feel that you could understand chicken talk pretty well well I, it so, is told in badger's point of view and i um but a lot of times what i do have to do is i actually have to write out what they're saying in english and then translate it into chicken. So I, I did the same thing. I took this really <laughs> seriously. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little chicken to you. Oh. And I wanna know if you can if you can translate. Okay. Okay. You ready? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I would say there are days when I feel um <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. That's yes. <laughs> well, uh, you know, if uh, if oh my gosh, I <laughs> can't do it. Okay, okay I'm having then, trouble. Okay, the next one is. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> I hate that when that happens too. Yeah. I mean, I I think I think mostly you should just avoid beans. Oh, that's, yeah, you got it. You nailed it. Okay, 
Um, I would certainly like to go for a walk with you. <laughs> close, close. I, I asked if you would like some Cuevos Mochilenos. Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, I seriously, I, I need to work on my chicken. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Last, last one. Uh, this w one will be a little bit trickier, but it just came to me. Walk, walk, we're good. Um, uh, it sounds a little personal, so I'm, I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> no, I was just playing a simple game of duck, duck, chicken. Oh, were you? Duck, duck. I, I, it, bop, it sounded bop. like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just kept imagining the chicken jumping. And so then I was like, I, I don't know what happened. It seems like the farmer stepped on the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. I could see that. I could see that too. Um, all right, we'll move on from from chicken. My chicken is very, very basic. I have not really studied hard, and I'm not fluent. I only know a few basic phrases. So I think you're I'll doing keep, better than I am. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep working on it. Um, okay, a uh, few questions from the audience that we have, and so if you if if the audience has any other questions, I'm gonna I'm gonna start asking some of the questions from the audience now. Um, uh, Nancy asked, what would you say is the student reading level of your Skunk and Badger books? Do you know oh. grade level student reading level? I would say, I, I would say probably eight. Yeah. Whatever that is. I would say if, you know, if, if somebody is actually going to read it themselves, if it's read to them, I think you can go younger. Mm -hmm. Um, Particularly if you pull out your ukulele and decide to sing, I think <laughs> that will add a certain fun to the whole thing that we, will be enjoyable. And yeah, I, we might get, anyway. we'll get there and then, okay. more, and then I might, so I, I think, might pull it out. Um, but I think it's about, I think, I do think it's about eight probably and then up and I think up to 90 at least. And you know, hey, if you're 92, I think you can do it as well. You know, I, they say a good children's book can be read by any age, really. Um, it's a book that you can read no matter how old you are. And I definitely think, I have this upside down. <laughs> I definitely think that, that Skunk and Badger fit that bill. Like, it's it it will delight different age groups on different levels. And so it'll be, it's, it's so well done that way. So, but yeah, I would agree. Like, eight plus. And then if, like... I, you know, you meet the occasional kindergartner who's reading like on a sixth grade level and they're always having a hard time finding books for them. And that's where I think Skook and Badger would be really perfect. Um, okay. So, uh, an, an anonymous attendee has asked, um, what have you found most challenging and in contrast, most enjoyable about writing a trilogy of stories based on mm -hmm. the same characters? So the the challenges and the joys of writing a trilogy? Um, well, the, the joy of it is that you have already, you've already started working on the world and the, and the characters. So then you get to continue them. Um, the, the challenge of it for me is is probably um <laughs> i guess the hardest the hardest part for me is just trying to uh, write three books in a quick amount of time <laughs> yeah that's that's the part that because usually the way that you end up selling it is in a contract with three books and this for me, the speed is difficult. I because um, as much as I am kind of actually thinking of the three books as kind of in my head, they are all these are all separate stories, but I am thinking about it as one big story. So I'm almost thinking of it as a longer novel, one novel with breaks, sort of like part one, part two, part three 
if if it were, I don't know, a very thick Margaret Atwood novel. It would be part one, part two, part three. Um, so that's the way I'm thinking most, about it. Most series, like most or trilogies for sure. Yeah. Very much that way. And then, yeah, because, because basically, yeah, you sort of, I sort of want to, I want to have that arc for the whole three. Um, and honestly, I, 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 I'm not necessarily done with three books. I, I think I would like to write more. The, the challenge is that actually I thought that in a way, because I already had the characters and I already had part of the world, that it would be easier to do each book. And they each feel like a novel in themselves. Mm -hmm. So that actually has been a bit of a challenge, just finding out, well, no, actually, it, it hasn't necessarily gotten that much easier when I'm working on the, well, right now I'm on working on the third book, and it hasn't gotten that much easier to craft all those little things and um, but I love, I mean, the thing that I love about this particular story is that it's, it's got a lot of jokes. It's about, it's, it's kind of, it's me playing on the page and I'm sort of playing publicly, which is a weird kind of vulnerability, but it's fun. So once it is I sort so of fun to read, like, it's so fun to like, I feel that when I'm reading a verse, I'm like, oh, she's, she just was having fun with this. <laughs> I am having fun. And that has been great. So as much as it's hard, it's also been fun. And it's, there's, it, it gives me life to write these. Um, I also liked writing One Came Home. But I will tell you that when I got to the end of that one, I was really tired. And I am not exhausted in the same way that I am when I write these. I mean, I'm not saying that it's less work. It's absolutely the same work. It's just the, the place that I go to write them is more, it's just more joyful and playful, which is fun. Yeah, I love that. Um, one quick question just for myself kind of related to that. I'm always, I always really like to ask writers about their process. Like if you feel like you kind of know everything that's going to happen, like you have it really planned out very well, or if you're more like exploring as you go, like what's your process like as you're writing the books? It's actually, it's actually both. Hold on a second. I'll get you something. <laughs> oh, um, I am right. I'm right. Yes, I'm right next to I'm right next to my office because it's a pretty small space I live in. So so I do I do a lot of what you're talking about where you just kind of you're just exploring. You're trying to find the right section. You know, you're, you're trying to find the moments that are really stinging. That's what it feels like. It feels like all of a sudden I'll hit something. I'll go, whoo. There's something there. And then I'll take that moment and I'll work on that until, until something sort of starts coming up. But in the meantime, while I'm working on, on those sections, I often get ideas for other parts of the book. So this is kind of like what I keep. This is my three ring binder that I'm working on book three. And you know, it's just like big, pages of stuff and it's divided by chapters and as I as something comes to me for another chapter I just write it down in another notebook and then later I go through my notes and I put it in this book and I just you know I like file it away and then when I get to chapter two and I'm working on that arc I look back at my notes and I go oh where did I what did I what was I thinking about that I needed to hit in that chapter and so I do stuff like this too so this is heavily this is like planning yeah but it's so it's actually both and I pretty much I I have to say I will try absolutely 
anything, anybody who has a good idea about how to write a book, I have probably tried it and I will try it again. If somebody says, oh, it works really well if you put post-its all over your door and you do the plotting. I've done that. I've done know? it too. I've done it too. <laughs> yeah, I, I think in the same way. And anytime a new like book on craft or you know novel writing comes out, I'm like, this is the one that's gonna tell me how to do it in 60 days, you know. Or exactly. I'm hoping. Um, yeah, I'm always I'm always <laughs> optimistic. And I'm all, usually disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It never, it, for me, it just, it never quite works that way. There's no yeah. shortcuts. It's just really. going to be messy. The scene, the scene, well, there's a scene where there's a big mess where the backpacks oh, yeah. fall and, and stuff falls out and there's just stuff everywhere. And, and it kind of reminded me of my writing process a little bit. I was just like, <laughs> That's what happens. Just everything just goes everywhere. And then I have to clean it up and try to fit it into the backpack. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> so oh. yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say maybe in that case, skunk is right. The bigger, the better. Backpacks, yeah, maybe. the bigger, the better. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger, the better. Um, I just, I am going to sing. I'm going to play the ukulele for you. It's going to be terrible. Yay! You're gonna love oh, it. that'd be great. Um, but I wanted to read, I just wanted to read my, the part of the book. Like there were so many favorite parts. So there was one part of the book where it almost made me cry. Oh. So I'm going to read a little bit of it. This is something that Skunk said. He said, this is on page 115. Mm -hmm. He said, one minute everything is dark and you are sure the worst possible end is coming. And then suddenly a spot of blue sky. How does that happen? Why does it happen? Who knows? But it does happen. It happens more often than one would expect. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And then it was so funny because then he goes on to talk about the opposite, how sometimes everything is terrible and the worst <laughs> <laughs> and the world is coming to an end. But I just kept going back to that suddenly a spot of blue sky. Um, Cause I think that like in this past year, we've, we've experienced moments like that. seems like everything's awful. And then suddenly a spot of blue sky. And I think skunk and badger can be that spot of blue sky for oh. for lots of people, for kids and grown ups alike. Thank you. And um, for you, I brought my <laughs> ukulele. <laughs> and um, I'll just I'll just tell you right now, I'm really terrible at the ukulele, but I have it. And every now and then I get like, you know, I just want to, you know, just like badger. And he goes, be the lead. Oh, there it is. You know, right? Yeah. But I actually, when he when he sings his song Eons, okay. So I wrote it out. I wrote out the song Eons. <laughs> you did it. You're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Oh um, yes. So I wrote out the chords. So I learned the chords. You know, and we're gonna have a little a little story time, um, singing Eons. So it's going to be, it starts with a C7. Well, first he goes, he goes, be the leaping to make sure everything's, you know, the be the leaping is there. And then he does, he does a C7 chord and goes, oh. he strums really hard. And then we got to go to the D, the D7, which is really hard and I can't do very well, but he goes, there we go. Big, ba boom, bang. Hey, Dan, Eon, happy birthday, Earth, volcanoes, seas of acid, watch out for meteorites. Oh, we got to go to E7 now. Got to E7. That sounds better. Archean, Eon, the rock record begins. Bacteria, bacteria <laughs> at last. Now we got to go to F7. Oh my gosh, I can't do this one. Okay. <laughs> Three, one, here we go. I almost got it. That one? Here we go. That was right. F7. This is the Proterozoic Eon. Worms, jellyfish, and snowball earth. Worms, jellyfish, and snowball earth. Now we gotta go to E7. This one's a little bit better. Phanerozoic Eon. Look, <laughs> shells. Have you ever seen shells before? No. Life evolves, diversifies, explosions, bang of life, age of dinosaurs, meteorite crash, age 
age of mammals. Ooh, nice. Nice. Yeah. That's we'll nice. That. We'll give it a nice resolution. G7, no. There we go. Ah. Uh, there we go. There you go. I like the mammals. <laughs> that was nice. That's a, that's a good take on that song. That's like the most impossible ukulele song ever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a challenge. And I did it all in one day. <laughs> I mean, you probably <laughs> couldn't tell because it was so high quality. <laughs> well, that's actually, that's actually pretty good because, see, Badger is writing that song. Uh, he wrote that Badger wrote that song and he it's one of those songs that you write to memorize things so I think you did a good I think you did a good job I mean this is how I memorize things I write silly yeah. songs right oh so, there you go it was more like a monologue with a with really bad ukulele strumming in the background but I think this could work I think more schools <laughs> should do they should make up songs together to memorize stuff I think it could be really effective so it's you might ways. inspire classrooms to make up songs to help them memorize. I think we're out of time and Allie's coming to tell us to stop talking. I'm not. I'm just here to, to make sure that you know that the entire audience, we're, we're all clapping for that beautiful <laughs> rendition. <laughs> that was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> so we are at our hour. And I believe that we have made it through the questions. So at this point, it is about time for us all to say adieu. But first, I'm going to take a quick moment to say a huge thank you to both of you for being here. It has been an absolute delight. Thank you for the rock facts. Um, and I'm not sure that we've ever had anybody speaking chicken. So that is like a <laughs> wonderful first for this channel. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now we would like to know, Amy, if you would still like for us to take over the world. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Okay. okay. We'll keep planning our, our world domination in our booth. Wonderful. I can't wait. Our, our chicken speaking overlords. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> so to all of our audience members, thank you so much for tuning out, turning out. Um, we are so happy to have you here. For anyone who'd like to get your hands on copies of these books, here, I'm going to link them all again so you don't have to go searching. There is this. So I've linked Rump, Time Castaways, and of course the book of the evening, Egg Marks the Spot. So go ahead and follow those books. Uh, those links to get to our bookstore website. Um, let us know, or, you know, if you are local, please come on in. We would love to see you. Um, let us know what you thought of this event in person or on any social media. We so, so love to hear from you. Amy and Liesl, one more huge, gigantic thank you for being here. It has been such a joy. And with that, I think it is time for some awkward waving. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. This is really fun. Thank yeah, you for thank being you. here. It was Bye. wonderful. Thanks, Liesl. Thank <laughs> you. Bye. Good night, everyone. <laughs>